Um, so, hi guys, I am Sabrina from The Power Within Us, and I'm here today with a very lovely, dear guest, Diana Cooper. Hi, Diana. Hello, Sabrina. Oh, thank you so much. I'm very, very pleased to interview you. Uh, you are one of the, the big uh, idols that I have and that I read so much of your books <laughs> and you helped me so much. So I'm, I'm a little bit of a like, oh my God, I'm going to interview her. What is going on? <laughs> um, actually, I'm just an ordinary person <laughs> doing my work. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm very excited. So thank you so much for accepting our invitation. And um, I, what I really wanted to, to ask to start with, it's a little bit about yourself and for people that may not have, um, not have heard about yourself and how, how you started your career and how you, your path started. And if you could tell us, that would be great. Okay, well, I came from a background that was totally non-religious, non-psychic, non-spiritual. And uh, everything psychic or spiritual was just laughed at. And then I was in at rock bottom when I was 42. I was getting divorced. I couldn't see a future. And I threw myself into a chair and I said, if there's anything out there, show me. And oh, wow. you've got one hour. And an angel came in. And even though I was completely completely non-spiritual I knew exactly that it was an angel a golden being about six foot tall and it literally held out its hand pulled me out of my body and took me on a journey and showed me the lots and lots of things because we flew for an hour but the most important thing was that it we went over this hall full of people covered in rainbow auras and I looked down and I said, am I down there in the audience? Because we were flying side by side and he said, no, you're on the platform. You're to be a spiritual teacher. This was rather a shock as you can imagine. Yeah. But brought me back exactly an hour later and I wrote it down. I didn't know what to do with the information. I knew nobody spiritual whatsoever. But you know, things started to change. I trained to be a hypnotherapist. I got out of my marriage. I set up in practice. And I was aware of angels around my clients, but I didn't work with them. And then 10 years after the first time they came, I was lying in the bath asking for some guidance for the classes I was running. And the angels came back. And this time they said, we want you to tell people about angels. And I said, no way. <laughs> people all think I'm bananas. You know, that is ridiculous. And they said words that are seared into me. Who is doing your work? Is it your ego or your higher self? And I said, okay. And I got out of the bath and three angels stood in front of me and gave me all sorts of information, which later became new light on angels and uh, that changed my life really i moved on to another course oh wow wow that sounds amazing yeah. after that wherever i went i taught about angels and they've supported me and i've told everybody about them oh wow it's so amazing how how these things happen these shifts happen in people's <laughs> lives and it's yeah, sort of so happening in mine, so I'm like trying to, to follow this guidance, but um, because you have so much experience and, and connection with the angelic realm, I really wanted to ask you, how can someone that's you know, starting in the spiritual journey and is also trying to really connect to, to archangel energies, how do they find out which archangel energies work best with their own energy and how do they really connect you know, with those energy? How, is that something you can do proactively or you, know, you just wait for it to happen? Or? Absolutely, work proactively. Know that every archangel has a different quality. They all work on a different color vibration. Mm -hmm. They're all from different source rays. And so as soon as you know that, you can start working with them. I always suggest that people work through their 12 chakras 
they call in the archangel of each chakra and feel it feel the energy get to know what it's like and and learn a little bit about each archangel and that will soon tune them in to exactly what they need mm -hmm. after all if it were to say on your earth star chakra your very first one that comes in if you're 12 when the fifth dimensional column comes down then archangel sand is in charge of the music is in charge of all the vibrations he understands about the music of the spheres and how all vibrational sound works but he is also working with your earth star chakra mm -hmm. to help ground you ready for the fifth dimensional energies and so he is black and white or often that merges and you see him as a sparkling silver color and then he will work with your earth star chakra he'll help you to open it up to get it um, awakened and spinning towards all your divine potential your gifts and talents everything that you can utilize to help you on your ascension journey your archangel sandalton is there for you at that level okay. and he will literally put his energies around you and hold you great great and I know um, in your Archangel, while well, we've got Archangel guidance books and so many uh, helpful books in that, so I'm definitely going to suggest to to everyone that's watching this uh, this interview uh, a few of your books that, that can help with that. But I'm going to be cheeky now. I wanted to ask a few questions that are a little bit more... Um, more like a, a common curiosity between people that I know, some spiritual people, or or just reading about the ascension process. Really, um, Metatron is such a great archangel, and I just wanted to to know if you could give us some information about why is it the one leading the ascension process between all the archangel energies? Why is it is it Metatron that is the one? I don't know, the leader, is, is, is that correct? Is that right? Or <laughs> is that such a thing? They would never talk about one archangel or angel as being better than another. Sure. But they are all on different and complementary rays and vibrations. And so Archangel Metatron is in charge of leading the entire Ascension program, not just for our planet, wow. but for the entire universe. And so when you're ready for a session, he will come to you, will connect with you, and you may even feel his golden glow around you or sense something because he is this most magnificent golden orange frequency. And he connects in with the sun and brings energy in from the sun as well as, and the great central sun, as well as helping us in every aspect of our lives. He is the most extraordinary being. He's in charge of the stellar gateway chakra, which is like a great chalice opening up to the higher frequencies of the universe. And so once you connect with Metatron, he can help you to connect in to source energies and other energies. Okay, that's, that's great, <laughs> amazing. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask in relation to ascension, uh, I know that this process is, it, is really happening. I can really see every day and it's, it's crazy how <laughs> many energies. Is. It's, it's so present in, in a lot of people's lives at the moment because even people that are not really awakened or connected to, to these you know, energies, uh, consciously, they are noticing some sort of changes. So I just wanted you to tell us a little bit more about what changes are to come and in terms of energy and the, the frequency and the vibration. I know there is a um, Tim Wilde as well, when I interviewed him, he, he was telling us there's a lot coming uh, our way, especially uh, in September, I think. So if you could tell us a little bit. Huge be changes in September. I'm sure I can't add anything to what Tim's told you. but. As you know, we're going through this extraordinary double dimensional shift from a third dimensional planet to a fifth dimensional planet in 20 years. Okay. So by 2032, we have to be ready for the start of the new golden age. Oh, wow. So incredible new energies are being pumped into Earth right now. 
awesome beings are coming in to help us, both in the angelic realms, the great masters, and the children being born now that are coming in carrying these huge, huge energies. The cosmic moment, of course, changed everything. That was the turning point from the old age to the new age. And at that moment, source energy touched the heart of every single being, every sentient being in the universe. And so it gave an opportunity for change. But now in September, in the middle of September, between the 16th and the 24th, but I think it's already started in certain parts of the world, the most incredible energies are coming in that will touch the hearts of everybody. This is a real time for Christ consciousness coming in. So the golden light of the Christ consciousness, which is a ninth dimensional energy held in Sirius, which is pure, unconditional love energy, is starting to flow into the planet. And it is going to make a massive difference. And I don't know if Tim talked to you about the Bermuda Triangle and what was happening No, there. he didn't, but I would love to know. Okay. So what is happening is that the great crystal of Atlantis, when Atlantis fell, fell into the center of the Bermuda Triangle. And of course, the great crystal was the vast power center of Atlantis. Yeah. And it was an interdimensional portal. It was a great computer. It was a power generator. And it linked directly into source power. So the wow. power it generated was totally pure. So it fell into the center of the Bermuda Triangle. And when the Intergalactic Council needed to use the portal aspect, it would, um, everything within the Bermuda Triangle would go through a rapid interdimensional shift. And so people would disappear to our eyes. Oh, wow. Of course, they had to agree it at a soul level, mm -hmm. and it would give them soul progress but very shocking for people who didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And so now that isn't happening so much because all of our frequencies have raised. Yeah. But the crystal is going to start to come to life again in September. And wow. so it is starting wow. to radiate and cascade out a great fountain of Atlantean wisdom. And so this is why people are going to be touched and moved very quickly in September oh, I see. <laughs> and people are already feeling something is happening and they're starting to feel <laughs> quite oh what is going on <laughs> and, and maybe even reacting in their bodies with headaches and tummy aches and things as as any stuck energy is being moved in preparation because yeah. your guides and angels are going to be trying to get you ready yeah for the exactly. opportunities as they always do of course Mm, definitely I really can can feel this shift I am at the moment going leaving London leaving everything behind following the call <laughs> going to to really connect with these energies and um, another thing that I'm really drawn to is all the Atlantean history and I am at the moment reading your book about Atlantis so I'm another question <laughs> I love it so much <laughs> I love the way that you, you really tell about how we are, you know, going back to that golden uh, era of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, going back to that technology, but most, uh, first and foremost, the unconditional love and really connecting to source uh, energy. So um, how is that going to work? Because it, it seems it was so, so different back then. And... And now the way that our world is, how are we going to go back into that golden era from, 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 this, <laughs> from this society? Not only are we going back into the golden era of Atlantis, but it's a foundation. It's a stepping stone. We're going even higher. Wow. And so the next golden age will be at a much higher frequency than the last one. And people who have incarnated now are really doing great service work to create this transition mm. that's happening between us and there are going to be changes lots and lots of changes everything that isn't in alignment with the new paradigm is going to collapse and so we can expect changes where businesses aren't operating with love with working together for the highest good with cooperation they will simply collapse and we're starting to see it already. Yeah. We're seeing shifting in the banking, in 
all sorts of things. We will have to change the way schools operate because that's not for the highest good of children. Exactly. And we will start to bring in what is right for them. Even the energies coming in in September will touch leaders, will touch people all over the world and get them to start thinking differently. Wow, that's amazing. I feel touched already just talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and in, so in a really proactive way for people that they're watching this and are not really aware of the ascension process, how can they be more proactive towards it? How can they try to really embrace and, and embody that in their lives the, to help the ascension process or to help themselves within, within that process? Well, uh, as I describe in uh, got a, okay, to Guide to Ascension, there are, are all sorts of pathways you can take. But the basic is the path of loving kindness. If you always work or do everything you can with loving kindness, being good to others, acting with honor and integrity, you are helping the Ascension process. If you want to really, really take part at a deeper level. You work with your 12 chakras. You work consciously with the archangels, if that's your pathway. And you uh, really try to shift things. Once you start working with Metatron, you then sign on to be an Ascension teacher in some way or form. Mm -hmm. In other words, you are using your vibrations to help others. If okay. you see somebody in distress, you will ask an angel to go and touch them. If you see an ambulance, you will ask an angel of healing to go there. These are just very simple things. You will start making your house a more peaceful place and spread peace around you. I do something very simple. I walk in the woods every day. I pick up a pebble and I decide on an angel or an archangel or a unicorn. And I hold the pebble and I fill it with that angel energy. Whatever it is, if it's Raphael, I'm filling it then with abundance, consciousness and healing. And then I'll leave it somewhere so that that pebble will be radiating out that light and people will be touched by it. Very simple thing Very to do. Simple. Yeah. And I've even had some of my grandchildren doing it. And they love it. Great. Great. It sounds, it sounds so simple, but it's so, it's so good when you send love to, to the world, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> it makes you feel good and it makes the world feel good. Yeah, definitely. So I have one more question for you. Um, it's more of a um, ascended master related question because um, I, I've started to feel that some people have some more present aspects of different ascended masters and they work better in alignment with uh, certain ascended masters. So do you have any recommendation as well for us to, to really merge to these ascended masters aspects or how, how we work with that? Is it a similar thing to the archangel energy or slightly different? Well, sure. Every one of the great ascended masters that's working with the planet works on a ray, on a vibrational frequency. And if, for example, you are incredibly tuned into teaching, you would connect to Lord Kuthumi, who is the world teacher, and you would connect into his yellow vibration and talk to him and think about him and ask to dream about him at night or go to his chamber at night, where you will learn from him, and then you will carry that vibration with you. If, for example, you are very, very interested in animals and you wanted to help animals, you might tune into the actually St. Francis aspect of Lord Kazumi, it was the yes. same soul, yes. and bring that energy into your life. Or Quan Yin, and bring in her beautiful pink love energy. Or Mary, and bring in her wonderful aquamarine light. Whatever you think about, you carry in mm -hmm. your energy fields. Brilliant, that's lovely. It's, it's very, very simple. I know. <laughs> we forget sometimes because we love, as humans, complicate and, and create oh, really? difficulties. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I just wanted to ask one last question. 
and it's a personal one it's about Shut yourself i know i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm cheeky uh i would love us to to tell us a bit about your own experience because when we interview people we really like to to connect to their own journey and really have that humanity aspects of our you know spiritual leaders like yourself to to tell us about their journey so i would like to ask you if um if you could tell us um, what was the most amazing or the most funny experience that you've had with this, uh, you know, spiritual, spiritual journey? Something odd or something that really touched you? Whatever you'd like to share with us, that would be great. Well, this is very spiritual, but it did happen last week. And it was my, with my dog, my beautiful plumed tail and lovely plumed ears and my granddaughter, I, I walked into the conservatory and there was my dog sitting on the table looking completely dejected and she'd cut all his hair off. <laughs> <laughs> Not very spiritual, but I said to that dog, you're just the same dog, I love you just as much. <laughs> <laughs> I used to walk behind her and she had these little pantalons that swung. Now she looks like a plucked chicken from behind. <laughs> 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 Oh. But seriously, animals um, have taught me such a lot on my ascension journey. And one of the loveliest experiences I had with Venus was when she was a very small puppy. And you know, I wrote a book about her, yes. um, Venus, the Diary of a Puppy and Her Angel. She was a very small puppy. And I took her to the woods for her first walk after her injections. Mm. And she was terrified. And I, th I didn't understand it. I carried her home. And the next day I took her again and she was terrified again. So I tuned in and I realized that she could see all the elementals watching her. And she was scared. So I sat on this bench with her and I called the elementals and I said, look, Venus wants to meet you in a, in a way that makes her feel safe. And the fairies and the elves and the sylphs, they wow. all came across the glade and she just sat up. And she wagged her tail and she jumped down into the grass and she played with them. And that was just such a lesson to me about energies that we're scared of simply because they're different, not because they're really scary. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds amazing. Very, very lovely. Thank you so much, Diana, for taking the time and to talk My to pleasure. us. My pleasure. Happy Ascension. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.